Welcome to September. Welcome to the Twinsburg Mayor's Report. And Kathy, I'd like to remind everyone the kids are back in school, so please be yes. careful driving around and uh, keep your eyes open. Thanks for coming back. I hope you enjoyed your uh, month off. I did. Good. Hope you did too. We're going to jump into a lot of things going on in Twinsburg because, as you know, they're very busy. And we'll begin with we talk about partnerships and regionalization, that sort of thing. And we haven't mentioned the, the town of Glen Willow in a while, but currently you are attempting with Glen Willow to have a trail that will link the two cities. Can you explain what's going on with that and well, where you've applied for money? We're pretty excited about this. We're in the planning process right now. We're working through the route of the trail. It will be approximately uh, a mile long, maybe a little bit more. And we're planning to start it off on Mortis Drive, which is off of Bell Meadow by mm -hmm. Glen Meadow Park. It, keep it in the woods and then access the um, area of Glen, Glen Willow and that will give our residents full access to the hike and bike trails of the metro parks. So we're very excited. It's a great location and will be a great amenity. Since it's two different cities, two different counties, there's lots of options for funding on this. The Clean Ohio Fund, some bike and, tri uh, bike and hike trail money. So uh, as I said, we're just in the planning process, right. just starting, but I think there's good potential there. Is this good that Glenn, or, I mean, uh Oh, who's the mayor over there now? Mark Segelka. Mark. You've worked with him before. I have, yes. Yeah, so. Any idea when you'll hear something? Well, first we have to have the engineers make sure that we have a good viable route. And there are some erosion issues that we'd like to take place in our community in Twinsburg. And if we can solve those erosion problems, which will be a benefit to the property mm -hmm. owners, I, I think it'll be a go. But it, it'll be a while yet. yet I would say spring till we know for sure if it's going to be a go. Okay, sounds kind of exciting now. Let's, speaking of exciting, let's talk about FedEx for a while. There's a couple of different things I want to talk about with that, beginning with your, is it the Planning Commission? or Somebody just approved their plans and so things are moving forward. Tell us about the update on that and then to get, let's get into, I know a tax abatement was already uh, reached as far as right. amongst your group. Right. Let's talk about it. Uh, actually, final approvals for the tax abatement will be tomorrow night but we're looking at five years, 25%. And, you know, this is a great, great company to have come to the city of Twinsburg. We're very excited about it. The um, building and construction will be about $40 million, so that's a wonderful revenue, revenue source for our school system. Even though we won't be getting as much income tax money that we would like the city, property taxes will really be a boon for the uh, school system. And... Um, we have, again, worked our way through the Planning Commission and Council. We have approvals, so they'll be ready to go shortly. Another thing that we're working on there is we just received plans from the property owners for a 207,000-square-foot spec building. So between Vistar and FedEx and the, and the uh, spec building, we're going to be off to a nice start mm -hmm. at Cornerstone. Well, well, I don't understand what, that, what does that mean. Well, they're going to put up the building and then hopefully attract somebody to oh, oh, occupy, gotcha. occupy the building. Um, let's get back to talking about FedEx again. And I always forget about this, and Don Cook is good when he's talking about road projects and bridge projects, the, the people that come in to build these while they are there is putting money in your pocket. Well, this, this will be the same thing when they're putting the building together for FedEx, correct? Oh, definitely. Any of the construction workers that come in and anybody who's registered in the city of Twinsburg, if, if they work for a certain amount of days, then they will pay income tax to the city of Twinsburg. Plus, a lot of times the people who work on those projects, they, they then go to our drugstores, right. they go to our restaurants. So it's a, a really nice boom for the city. Okay. Now, I know you didn't win this, but you were one of the three finalists, and this is pretty important, too. Um, something called the T Team NEO Plus Awards, and you were up for asset creation because of this building. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, the Team NEO Plus Awards, they have that ceremony every year. There's lots of different categories. Twinsburg was nominated with two other projects for asset creation, and that was taking the Chrysler location and turning it into the Cornerstone Business Park a real regional project it's you know for, it's going to have impact for a lot of people in our region so we're very proud to be a finalist mm -hmm. one of three finalists but however the um, global center for health innovation took the top award but nevertheless it was we were quite filled with pride that evening to be there well, let's go back I, I can remember since I've been here 107 years when when the Chrysler plant closed, the panic, I remember bringing a camera over to your office and more or less letting you vent a little, but also to tell people, you know, it isn't going down the way we thought. 
when you look back to from there until your optimism, hopefully someone will come in once that area is cleared. Now you have people moving in there and, and very big people. Could, did you did you foresee it going this fast? Because to me, this seems like there hasn't been that much time when there was a dormant activity over there. Boy, I, I don't know if we were just under lucky stars or what, but we found the right people to purchase that property. Um, the they've Gir done a great job marketing. They've it, done too. a great job. Di Girano family, Scannell Properties, and um, uh, it has moved along faster than we anticipated. I mean, we were always optimistic, mm -hmm. but we were also realistic and it is moving really, really well. And that was one of the reasons that we were nominated for this award, because some of those properties, as you know, sit dormant forever. 20 right. years. Right. So we have great progress. We're proud. And I, I sound like I'm Larry's son sometimes because I plug him so much. Yes. But you know, we're, none of this gets done without a great economic Absolutely. person. And you guys have a great one over there. Larry Finch does a nice job. We do. And I know that uh, the owners of the property appreciated everything that he did to help secure those grants. $5.2 million makes a big difference in how fast that uh, property b will be rehabilitated. Right. And it, it, it was just, it was the key. It was the lynch key in there. You know, and speaking of that, it, it seemed like there wasn't a lot going on. But now that this has got a green light. There's constant activity over there now. Every time I drive by there, twice today I might add, yeah. all kinds of bulldozers and things in there cleaning it up. Right. It's one thing to see the activity on the site, but behind the scenes, the paperwork, the meetings, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that all has to be done so that they can get out there on the site. Now, when the, the spec building and the FedEx building are up, how much does that take? I mean, how much will you have left to, to have people come in and move in with? Well, let's see, we have 40, 30, that's 70, there's about 100, probably about maybe 80, so there's there's maybe 80 to 100 acres left. Oh, good. So, so we have a lot of property left. Mm -hmm. But this could be the domino effect you're looking for. I, I believe that. I think even Vistar, they were the catalyst right. for other people to look at that property and see how it could be developed. And um, once the ball gets rolling, I mm -hmm. think it'll go pretty quickly now. Good. Let's, st let's stay on the area of new things going up, and it's not on my list here, but recently I attended a uh, ribbon cutting with you over at the end of Highland Road in 91, Heartland, the, the new facility there, which is an ideal place for that, right next to the Cleveland Clinic and down the road from University Hospital. Gorgeous building, by the way. I Beautiful. mean, your thoughts on, they were very pleased with the cooperation that they received from you and the administration as far as not having to deal with a lot of red tape. Were you happy also on your end as far as the finished product? Please. Well, this is a skilled nursing and rehabilitation center, and it is just first class. I was so impressed with not just the building itself, but the people who are running it. And we could see that it was going to be a really good organization because of the people we dealt with mm -hmm. during the construction. Um, you know, I, I know they complimented the city that we were cooperative, but that cooperation comes because they provided everything that we needed to make the project move s smoothly and it is just it's it's a wonderful wonderful facility and i hope people will stop in and take a look at it i know they have an open house coming looking back though bef you know now you have the cleveland clinic and, and all these other hospital related facilities here what a perfect time for a place like that, and proximity-wise, perfect also. You probably remember years ago, 15 years ago, we started talking about having a health and education corridor yeah. along State Route 91, especially in Twinsburg. And we are really, really making it happen with the Kent State Regional Campus, uh, Cleveland Clinic, University Hospital, DeVita Dialysis, the Heartland of Twinsburg, and so many other medical-related mm -hmm. companies like AsuraMed and, and BMS. So we're very proud that we have moved in to the direction that we intended to go and we're fulfilling our goals. And from a financial standpoint, being the mayor of the city, you know, retail's great as far as, you know, filling up the businesses, but the health and education type sectors, those are big as far as drawing in decent amount of paying jobs and, and decent amount of number of jobs too. Definitely. Uh, though, you know, we're always going to have medical facilities. We're always going to have educational facilities. Those are industries, if you will, mm -hmm. that are lasting and have substance. Going back to FedEx, the tax abatement, was there any fight on that, really, or was everyone no. pretty much in agreement? I, I think everybody was in agreement. Because we ex anticipated more full-time jobs than we're actually getting there, um, this is a lower tax abatement than we usually get out, give out at the, both the percentage and the number of years, but it's appropriate for that property. What kind of shot in the arm is that for Twinsburg schools? 
Um, well, you know, the property tax is up, I believe, about 49 mills, and most of that goes to the schools. So I, I don't know exactly what the dollar mm -hmm. amount is, but we can get it for you. But the point is, uh, if they're doing their job over there as far as keeping everything in line, this will just be a shot in the arm for them. Oh, definitely. So, okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, before we go to our break, let's talk about a couple things. This is old now. The wastewater workers recently finalized through bargaining their pay scale, and what was that, a 3% raise? 3%. This is the Teamsters Union for the wastewater treatment plant, and pretty much everything stayed the same in the contract, uh, but it does assure them a 3% raise raise each year for the next three years. And I'm really, really happy that we can enter into these contracts and project out a three-year increase for mm -hmm. our employees, considering that we had that freeze on wages for several years. Right. So I, I, this is a good thing. So you look at and this is a payback, really, because they sat on that for how long? That, and it, it is such a well-run facility. They're a great, great uh, group of employees there. Okay. In a minute, we'll, after our break, we're going to come back and talk about the shared wastewater deal you got going on with the reminder bill. So we'll, okay. we'll bring that up and a lot of other things. So stay with us. We'll be right back after the meetings. Mayor Prokop from Twinsburg, and this is kind of exciting. And again, we're talking about being neighborly. You're helping out the village of Reminderville as far as some of their wastewater issues, that sort of thing. Let's talk about how that all came about and what the county's role, because I think they have something to do with it. Uh, Department of Environmental Services, DOES, Summit County, operates that particular plant. It's the Aurora plant. And it's had some EPA violations over the years. It's older, it requires a lot of maintenance, and it's just not functioning the way that it should. We've known that for years. We talked for years about taking that uh, effluent and treating it, sending it over to Twinsburg to our wastewater treatment plant. And we have finally negotiated the contract. Um, the contract is they are purchasing in bulk 650,000 gallons per day of capacity from the city of Twinsburg. So you have room for this? Oh, we absolutely do. They're paying $1.9 million for the capacity. Um, we will also charge one and a half times non-residents for the sewer rates, their quarterly billing. And uh, DOES will be contributing 11% to our capital projects if they're directly affected um, or related to, to that uh, plant. So it's a win-win situation for the environment, for DOES, for the city of Twinsburg. Right now our plant has a capacity that we're approved for 5.8 million, uh, <laughs> $5 million gallons that we can treat. And we're only somewhere around 3 million, usually so 2, 8, 2, 9, room, so we so have people. lots of room. How does that, you know, now it sounds like, well, you're, it's getting a roar off the hook as far as being over capacity with them. But do they lose the money they would get that that is now being sent to you, and do you know if that hurts them? No, uh, it, it's called the Aurora plant, but it is, oh, okay. it's in Remindable. Gotcha. Um, n no, that's, DOES will get their portion of the quarterly billing, and we will get our portion. Okay. So it won't affect Remindable in any negative okay. way. Okay, and, uh, and Sam's probably happy now that we know it, our wastewater can be treated and taken right. care of with some room. Absolutely. Okay, well good, I'm glad that was finally taken care of. Let's talk about, um, these are upcoming events now. Let me talk about one that we've had in the pike for quite a while. That's the the uh, Freedom 5K walk to bring the big uh, wall over next Cost year. Cost of Freedom. Cost of Freedom in 2015. I guess what, we want to plug the date. This year's walk is September 14th, right in the middle of this month. But what I want to get to is I would read, I think uh, Joe Jasney had mentioned 
they're getting real close to finally making that fundraising goal that was, I, I think it's like 80000 It or is. Something. It's a big figure, but they're very close, I guess. And I can't believe that they have raised, well, of course, we had con they had contributions not only from the city of Twinsburg, but Reminderville and the township and VFW organizations. But the bulk of this money has been raised by a core group, the VFW, with support from um, several of our Twinsburg employees, Adele Nikaza, Shannon Collins, Angel Keefe and uh, Sandy Panzik, they really have put so much time and effort into fundraising. Uh, I am amazed at what they've accomplished. It's, it's, it's really I think something. the trick here is they, they did not wait on this. They, the minute they heard they had a chance to bring this is when they started the fund. There was no, it's been in the pike for a while, but you needed that much time to raise that kind of dollar. Oh, absolutely. And not only this 5K coming up in September, but we still have other fundraising, or they have other fundraising opportunities. There will be a wine tasting. I think there's going to be a, a whiskey tasting at Brewster's, and um, they will continue this. They're knitting scarves and doing whatever they can. You know, it's it, we have the goal of eighty thousand dollars, but in the end, we really don't know what it's going to cost. It right. could be more than that because it is an enormous project and it's a big weekend. Do you think the average resident, Twinsburg or whoever, doesn't really fully understand how big this this whole thing is? Oh, I have no doubt about it because I certainly didn't have a concept of it till I finally went online, did some research. They showed us brochures and. Um, the displays that they're going to have there are just amazing. Plus, opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, speaking opportunities, educational pieces. So it is going to be a five-day intensive uh, Cost of Freedom tribute. And, and as you sit in the, quote, background, because really this group has spearheaded this, you get to reap the benefits because I think this is going to be a huge feather in the cap that you're one of the few cities that pulled up bringing this in because I again I don't think the average resident knows how big a deal this is. That's true. In fact, it's such a big deal <clears throat> that when the VFW applied for a date, the date was two years away from their application because it goes all over the country, and um, you have to get in, in line to be able to be the recipient and have the honor of having it in your town. It's going to be exciting. It will be to say the least. All right. A couple other things I want to bring up. Um, let's go the end of summer again. It's the big dog chance for the dogs to get out and swim. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> let's bring that up. And tell us how the year went as far as the pool goes. Okay, the, the pool was great because, as you know, we opened it up to non-residents. This was our first year. Right. We had the concession stand was opened up again. Was so that a success? It was. Uh, we had some brand new chairs. We had a new water feature. The slide was all redone. Mm -hmm. It looks like a brand new pool. And residents enjoyed it. We had we had a lot of rainy weather, but we right. had a lot. We had at least swimming weather, maybe not real hot, but uh, it was never overcrowded. It was it it ran really well. And thank you, Brandon Burns, our aquatics director. What a great guy, and he has great business mind, and he also has a really good grasp of what the residents want. And, and you'll keep it open to uh, non-residents again next year? We will. Okay. It worked out very well, so that will happen. <laughs> and you're right, we have the doggy swim coming up, the doggy paddle. Which is, and I'm looking uh, for the date. It's the September 6th. 6th. Yep. So again, Dennis went last year with his dog, and there's a zillion dog. It's, it's Worth seeing, that's for sure. It's always exciting right. and fun for them. So that, again, is uh, September 6th. Update us now on all the improvements that were made. I don't know how bad the weather was as far as the golf course goes, but as far as Glen Eagles, a lot of improvements done over there. Lots of improvements. Um Yes, we got slowed down because of all the rain that we've had recently, but when they're out there working on it, they're moving. What happening in the front nine they are putting in uh, new irrigation on most of the holes some of it will be completed next year they're relocating the cart paths and the tees well on hole one um, the cart path simply because we have we're in the same situation that we were with with 10 and 18 last year where the cart path was running between the two holes mm -hmm. and it caused a, d a really dangerous situation Same thing, relocating the cart paths, relocating the tees, 
but the biggest project right now is the practice range. They're enlarging the practice range. They're giving more area to move the tees around so that we have more uh, opportunities to practice off of a grass rather than just the mm -hmm. mats. And uh, I'm just very, very excited. This is going to be a really premier course when we're done with everything that we have planned for the next three years. Is there still something in the back as far as bringing in the clubhouse where you can have parties and a liquor license, any of that? Is that still in the back burner somewhere? Absolutely. Uh, we are hoping that council will approve a contract with a um, architectural firm that we just selected, Prospectus, and if they approve that, then we will go ahead, work on a design. Once we have the design, then council would decide if they want to move forward or so, not. So, uh, for me, I didn't even know that was in the pipe, so maybe it's closer than I'm thinking. It could if be. If it gets full approval. If right? it gets full approval, maybe we'll be in construction next year. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Wow, okay, that's exciting. All right, let's move into important road projects. I know the bulk of them are probably winding down as the summer winds down, but if you're traveling, what, 91, you're going to run into one lane somewhere. Let's, let's update all our road projects. Okay, right well, starting with Westwood in Glenwood Acres, that project is just about complete. That one's being buttoned up. Uh, the road program, most of the side streets are finished. But, yes, we have a major project going on, sanitary sewer installation on State Route 91. And you're correct. Traffic <laughs> is going just uh, one-way traffic at a time, so we have flaggers out there controlling the traffic. If you have another route, I would suggest you use it, especially at, at rush hour. So that project is going forward. That, of course, is tied to the overall State Route 91 um, improvement project. Mm -hmm. And also Warren Parkway is being reconstructed. So there's a lot of activity going on right on State Route 91. Where do all these roundabouts fit in? The uh, roundabout that is approved is the one at State Route 91 in Glenwood. Again, that's probably out for construction in 2016, okay. 2017. It's, so these it's, improvements it's, will all be done before that happens. Right. And uh, re the second roundabout that we're looking at is Meadowwood. In fact, this evening, the Meadowwood um, Homeowners Association and residents are coming in for a meeting with our city engineer. So we'll be discussing that, and council will be making a decision on that one. And, w and what road projects are just closed and finishing up? You have a few uh, we just a few side streets that yeah. we were doing, and of course, manhole, m manhole reconstruction, the sidewalk program, um, trees. The, ci the city is in the process of cutting down ash trees, which mm -hmm. are diseased, and some other dead trees, tree lawn trees, and those will be in the fall and spring planting. We went out to, or will be going out to bid, and we'll be planting 200 trees in the well, spring. What will fall. you replace the ash trees with? It depends on the street you're on, okay. and, but ornamental trees, and, and we're trying to mix up the varieties. Yeah, the, so it's not all one Right. Thing, the yeah. theory used to be the same tree all along the roadway, and then if they get a disease, everything gets wiped out. <laughs> so that now, sense, now yeah. the whole theory's changed, and you mix it up a little okay, bit. Okay, smart move. Um, you've had some promotions recently, I know, in uh, at least for sure, fire. in the fire department. Let's yes. talk about that. Well, uh, fire department, since we have a new chief, Chief Tim Morgan, his position opened up as a captain, and um, well, I'm sorry, his his position didn't open up. He was promoted from captain, captain, but we have a position that opened up with lieutenants. And Marcus Kettner was just promoted as our newest lieutenant. And again, I know how important it is for you to hire within. So that that image. I love to do that. I mean, they go through the testing procedure, and we we do the list through civil service. And always delighted when one of our own members comes out right. number one. Now, next month we're going to probably try to have a special guest here, but what I'm leaning to, and, and who has better grasp of the bell language, that sort of thing, but elections are coming, and not elections, yeah, elections are coming, but most of the things on the ballot aren't people, they're issues, and I know you have probably eight amendments plus the one about getting rid of the mayoral primary. So, again, I know you're not, you're not for keeping that, but... Anything else we need to know about as far as those amendments, or are they mostly house cleaning? Well, a lot of them are housekeeping. For one thing, we're updating the classified, non-classified service. As I mentioned before, we have listed in our charter members of the school, bo uh, the school board, the school administration, the library. They do not fall under our civil service regulation, so they need to be removed. Mm -hmm. So there will be an update of classified, unclassified service. We're looking at putting in a term of office a specific date 
for council members because right now it's it's a moving target and sometimes when we have to fill out uh, legal forms we need to have a date and we want that to be in our charter so those are a few things we're talking about the meetings an update on the definition of the bar parks and recreation department um, we will be asking the residents again if they would like to remove the primary, which I'm hopeful that will happen. Well, let me get your thoughts, because I read in the paper for someone who seems to be in favor of this argument has been no one should be elected that gets less than 50% of the popular vote. What are your thoughts on that? I, I, I don't even understand that. A majority is a majority. But I will say that we even before we had a primary election, I don't believe that there was any mayor ever elected with less than 50% of the vote. I know that I certainly never was, and I, and, or Karabek, and I don't know but before that. But, um, but a majority is, is a majority as far as the rest. Do you still consider this, I brought it up before, not only time consuming as far as having to do kind of two you know, campaigns, but it takes you away from what you really are there to be doing, correct? Or and, whoever, and that, the incumbent. Th and you know. that's true, whether it's a, a mayor going for re-election or it's a council member, it's a time-consuming process and I, I just think an unnecessary process. We are a nonpartisan community and that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. We really don't need a primary election. But nevertheless, that question will be before the voters again. Um, and who do you think we can bring over to describe some well, of this? Well, and I'm glad you brought that up, 7A01, and I would like to suggest that we have Dave Maestros at our Your next... law director. Yeah, at our law director, and he will go over the changes. I can go over them with you, but mm -hmm. I know that there would be some technical questions, and, <laughs> and he could answer those better than I can. Okay, we'll have him by next month for at least for half the show. Uh, as we wind things down, tell us about the... Anyone that takes a visit over to your place over there to drop something off or pick something up may notice that the lobby is completely... Under construction It now, is. Correct? It's just about done. Uh, we have a few things. We're still working on the, the restrooms. We're waiting for some, we're waiting for mirrors to come in. We're waiting for d door strikes to come in. So when, when all of that is uh, delivered, we'll be finishing up the restrooms. We're also waiting for several other items. But overall, it's, it's a great addition. And the reason that we did it, first and foremost, is safety of our employees. Unfortunately, as you know, the schools had to go to those airlocks and, and safety centers for their employees. Um, basically, it's the same thing at City it, Hall. It's a sad commentary, but in, in this day and age, it must. Right. So while we're doing that, while we made those changes, we're updating all of our ADA requirements. So it'll benefit everybody. Okay. And do you have any um, foreseeable deadline when you hope that's done by? Uh, well, I was hoping by the first <laughs> council meeting back from recess, which is August 26. But um, as I said, well, there's some delay in some of the materials. So till we till we have everything in place, okay. I would say another month. Okay. And as we wind down, let's have an update on Corbett Farm in that area. Okay, Corbett Farm uh, sales are going along very well. If you've seen the type of homes they're putting up, they're just gorgeous, and they have just started their phase two. So it's moving along great. What price range are those going for? You know, I, threes. I yes. Oh, I know that they're in the threes, and and I believe that's the starting point for them. Do you, do you feel that there's still a big need for that kind of housing out here? Are you having a, a lot of people interested? I'm beginning in? to think more than ever. We right. have lots of beginner homes. We have lots of condominiums. We have some senior areas such as Belmar and Arbor Glen. So I think young families and um, two-income families are looking for that kind of property. Right. I know that there's some great houses going in also off of Liberty Road. So we're a very desirable community. Okay, and as we real quickly, I saw that the the figures came out that property values are going down actually in Twinsburg. Do you blame that on the? They're, they're saying condominiums. Well, uh, absolutely. I talked to some real real estate people two different types of real estate people this weekend and they all confirmed that it is in the condos but also that it's throughout Summit yeah, County, throughout too, the entire right. region and there it's a catch-up from what happened with the economy a few years ago. Okay. Again, special guest next month. We'll talk about those ballot items and other uh, things that are coming up. Thanks for coming by. Welcome back. Excellent. Thank you.